Well, howdy, tubers. Well, I thought I would give you all an FAA update while I'm showing, showing you the H5 apart here. Uh, anyways, I had to go downtown to the FAA and talk to Mark and, and, and take my logbook so that he could uh, take video or uh, cop make copies of it, which he didn't get them get all of them when I was at Lee Summit Airport. So he did some more. Of course, I just stayed downstairs. They don't allow anybody upstairs now. I mean, I have been upstairs before when I got my airframe repairman certificate. So anyway. So it just comes down to I need to be signed off to fly into each and every airport from 4M04. I got I can go from 4M04 to 3GV or 4M04 to LXT or 4M04 to uh, ONO or 4M04 to um, let's see, GPH or 3EX, but I have to be signed off just like uh, one of my subscribers says he's a CFI and says that uh, that's what he says and it has nothing to do with uh, being 20, inside that 25 mile uh, radius of your uh, mother airport, I guess you'd say. And there comes Spiker down to see what's going on. Is that right? Did you come see what's going on? You, did you come see why there's no wheel here on the landing gear? Because mm. I'm... Well, I've got a call in today with uh, Black Max. They called me while I was heading downtown. And so I called them when I got home. And then haven't heard back from him yet. So, but I did watch a video with uh, the, his name is Keith and Dan Johnson had a video, and I watched that. So, uh, anyway, uh, back to the FAA thing. Uh, of course, you know he just they keep saying that I just really need to go ahead and get my light sport, and then everything would be cool, or get all these signed off things. So, for now, once I get the H5 annual for its first annual, of course, you can see it's all apart. Um, that's why I'm not flying it, because it's in the annual. So, and of course, you know, my airport would be be pretty muddy because it's we got snow on the ground well actually we did have snow on the ground this morning now it's it's melting off and it was raining when i was coming back from the faa so anyways i'm just getting some videos of things and oh i guess uh if joe watches this uh, see if i can get a video because i might have to pull it out because i know joe wants me to make him one of these uh, tapered pins if I can get that uh, where's that oh it's right there that tapered pin I don't know if I'm getting it on the oh yeah, yeah. there we go there's the tapered pin that Joe that was at the homo gathering wants me to make him one of those machine him one of them and that will just work great. There are no, well, let's see. Make sure there's no slops there still. Nope. No slop there. So that's a good thing. Can't move this around too much because it's up on the, up on a jack and a block and a bucket. And if, let's see. There we go. I think, yeah, up there to, since the landing gear leg's off, 
there's my my tank in there and I want to get rid of yeah I can't let's see maybe turn this on there we go how about that get rid of this stuff here if I can find something that's light that'll go on to that and up here for my inlets that I made that go to that's working better to there and to there which those are really not in a good position they should be they should really maybe be up here because my leg is right here, but I guess any air that I can get in there better than none. Although, you know, I've got... Well, I don't know what happened. I guess I must have inadvertently hit some button and shut that last video off before I got to say anything. Anyway, that's what I was going to say was show you was these vents that I haven't figured out how to shut them off other than putting putting foam in there but my neck events there I got a piece of screen in there to keep critters from coming in when you're flying so anyways I guess I should add this to that other video and and uh, before I get this too long oh, show you that little guy again that's so cool come out so neat Whoop. I don't know if that's focused in or not. Sure don't look like it. There it is. Works pretty good. Anyway, I better get this. Oh, there's my... my covers that I made see there a little bit of concave or convex whichever way you want to say it that I guess I can keep on video and say shut up yet show you my English wheel I made and that's how I made those little covers Let's see get it Just aluminum and aluminum, since I'm only using aluminum on there, it works. Took me two days to make it, and and I made it for my 12-foot B25 that I put aluminum gear doors on. And the nose gear needed uh, just a little bit of compound curve in it. And so, like I say, it took me two days to make that. Okay, I can't remember what I called it. Uh, not shrink a machine. Oh, shoot. See, I told you I can't remember anything. Um, well, that machine there. Anyway, took me two days to make it, about 15 seconds to get what I wanted on the B25 gear door, but I've made quite a few of these little little boogers here. And, of course, the... The thing on the back is a hacksaw blade that was wore out, and then I grind off the teeth, and and then instead of drilling that stuff, because that stuff's hard to drill, you just use a roper punch. And I thought I'd look around here and see if that was around here. If if anybody knows or doesn't know what a roper punch is, and here's one. Now, I got mine from Harbor Freight, but they don't sell them anymore. When I got these, they were selling them, or they were, they, when I picked it up, the, the label said $19.99. Took it up front, and she said, that'll be $0.17. Cents. 
I thought, hmm, said 1999 back there. I said, well, we're trying to get rid of them. So I went back and got two more, and then the next day I went and got the rest of them and gave gave a few of them away for for Christmas presents. And boy, am I, oh, yeah, I guess this video isn't getting that long, but I want to combine it with the other video so it all makes sense. Anyways, I will let you all go. Sorry it's so long, but a lot of information there. So there you go, and God bless.